You were born in Jamestown? Jamestown, New York, yes, 1926. December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. Did you enlist or were you drafted? Uh, 71 years ago, the 18th of January, there was 24 17-year-olds that boarded a bus down here at the post office. And we went from here to Sampson, New York. We went to Sampson, New York for naval training for four weeks. After four weeks, we were given a furlough or a, uh, a leave for three weeks, 21 days of what it turned out to be. Came back to Sampson, got on a train, we were on a train that went from here to the west coast. It took us a week. We came through Jamestown that one night, I remember. And uh, I got out to say goodbye to Jamestown as we were from coming by. And I uh, we went to Shoemaker, California. Came alongside this huge, huge ship that was there. It was a USS Essex, the aircraft carrier. I had just come back from Rabal. That was uh, that was after a, a raid, and they came back to the ship, and the squadron was, you know, uh, that was when uh, they came back when they had they had. Uh, got into a lot of uh, resistance and there was a lot of heavy air flak from, uh, from being shot at when you met over the target. And they got hit pretty bad. The uh, Franklin got really, really hit bad. As you all know, it was just about... The, the Wasp was there. They had secured from general quarters and as they secured from General Quarters, they all went down to the chow line. And right at that point, a uh, Jap plane came in and dropped an iron piercing bomb. It went through the flight deck, through the hangar deck, through the next deck below, and exploded underneath them, underneath the chow line. And it, it killed 700 sailors. Mm. We were going to General Quarters, and I was going across the flight deck. and. We had gone through where the Franklin had gone through, the, and the Wasp and uh, the Hornet got hit that morning. Anyhow, the, the water was just littered with men in the water. They were floundering in the water. Some were their heads above water, had, had their life, life, life uh, vests on and so forth. And some didn't. And as I got up there, I could see that there was a lot that were in trouble and there was nothing we could do and we plowed right through them because we were under attack and we were under a lot of stress. We were going full bore. Uh, anyhow, I couldn't see those guys down there all by themselves in the water. That was heart heartbreaking. I had my shark knife with, I took it out and I cut the release lines on these baskets that hung on the side of the ship so that they were counterbalanced. So if you cut the rope, it would counterbalance and the basket would fall over and out of it would come a, a floating raft. And uh, I cut three of those loose with my knife. It's the only time I ever used my shark knife in the Navy. Mm -hmm. uh, if I saved anybody, I don't, I'll never know, but it was... I felt a little better about it because I had to get up on a bridge and go and be on my watch. This was a one of the situations where when our our planes came back from a, a raid and uh, this is a, a TBM, a torpedo bomber with a bubble in the back here only there's just half a person sitting in here. 
So we, uh, that's me standing there, and that's the, 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 the preacher, uh, our minister there, giving last rites. This is a blanket we threw over this here, this, this part of the plane. There's Forbrag, the bugler, he was blowing taps at the time. Then we all got and pushed the plane to the fantail and dumped it over the back of the ship. So it went into the water. Mm -hmm. We didn't have any time to work on the, on the plane because it was so badly damaged. And he went down with it, of course. But uh, that was a, a sad day. I was up on the bridge around two o'clock, a little after two o'clock in the afternoon. I was getting ready to get relieved. I was on watch on the bridge up here doing my thing. Uh, on the bridge, we had one hour on the wheel, got a kamikaze, came in. Well, he came in, number one. He came in and went like so. We got him out here. He started smoking out here. He came in like so went up and around, came around, like so, and then he went boom, right there, right in front of number two elevator, right there. And that's where that explosion is. This whole area, he had the bomb right there. Put a big hole in the flight deck right there. All of these planes, all these planes were gassed, armed, ready for takeoff. There's about 70 or 80 of them out there. They were right up to this point here. We got hit here. Had that plane hit here, 
No, I wouldn't be here. That's all there is to it. But we got the we got all got burned up on a, on the uh, bridge. We all got the purple harp on the bridge that got burned. Mm -hmm. Hands, face, neck, arms. We were not at condition one. We were not at uh, condition two or general quarters when we got hit. It was just right out of blue, bang. Otherwise, we would have been more prepared. We got burned up pretty good. Gosh. Our hair got burned off. Everybody crowded into the, there was no room in the pilot house. And we, everybody dove for the pilot house that were up on the bridge. One time, I was going across the flight deck up there, and I, <laughs> we were under attack, and this plane come in, he was strafing. And uh, he's coming in right across I was standing right there. I'd come across here. I was standing right there. The plane came in like this, and he was strafing, and he shot about a foot up on my head like that. Wow. <laughs> Somebody was with me that day. World War II in the Pacific, four years of bloody hell, came to an end here. September 2nd, 1945, a solemn ceremony on the deck of the USS Missouri in Tokyo Bay. A mighty warship and a peace to celebrate. Oh, we were right next to the Missouri. That's what I thought. Yeah, we stood there and watched the whole thing in our binoculars. They were right down below there. We were there. That's the day we went home. Feeling on the, on the ship. Well, you can't believe what's happening is happening. You know, you just... You're there, yeah. <coughs> you, 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 have, you have to think on it real hard, and then, and then it'll kind of sink in a little bit. But when you're, when you're there looking at it and seeing it and you're there, uh, it's hard to believe that history is being made at that particular moment, yeah. and you're there with it. Saw a lot of that, you know. Did you pop a cork or something? <laughs> no cork to pop. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when our planes went over Tokyo the day they signed, they, they declared peace, our planes were about to go over and drop bombs. They got the word, the war is over. They turned around and dropped all of their, jettisoned all of their bombs into the, into the ocean. And they came back to the ship and landed end the war. Well, I emphasize it all the time. They should honor and respect that flag. I don't care who or where, but they should. Really, really, and they should really think about Memorial Day and days like that. What's the message you think today's youth should take? I'm just one of those believers, that's all. I'm, I'm sold on when I was in the service. This was my home for two years, and uh, I thought the world of it. I really did. I'm so happy that I was there and did what I did and saw what I saw. And I saw it all. I saw a lot. There's a lot of officers aboard, aboard our ship. I'm only a quartermaster, third class. I also darn happy to get that third class you cannot believe. Of all my achievements, that's the one thing I achieved and I really, really, really uh, thought a lot of that rate and what it stood for. We were up on a bridge. I was right up where all the, all the captains came aboard, all the admirals came aboard. They'd come, they'd see, the, <clears throat> the captain, once he's underway, when a ship is moving, he cannot leave that bridge until it stops someplace else. So he's captured in that little room up there all the time. Uh, we had admirals on board. They were. They